a little bit of backstory with Celeste. Sid raised her. But Kefka's come back. Alright, so, minecart level. Everybody's favorite. Uh, graphically, this level did not survive the test of time. It looks pretty wretched, I gotta say. It looks even worse on the GBA version than the original SNES, and it already didn't look great on the SNES, let's be honest. It already didn't look fantastic. But it's just another gauntlet scene, like the, uh, the Serpent's Trench or the Leith River. The game has several of these. <laughs> you have noticed, too, that Edgar now has the jump command. These guys are all weak to thunder, so we're just going like, to pile on the thunder damage. And I think thunder with his spear will do more damage than the chainsaw. Let's find out. The way th jump works is it deals X amount of damage and then it doubles that damage. Eh, I guess chainsaw is still better. But then it doubles that damage if you're using a spear. And Edgar is one of the two characters in the game that does use a spear. So yeah, I guess we're thinking the chainsaw is better, but later in the game when we get better spears... Actually, there are better spears for sale, I believe. If we had gone to Sen, we could have bought a better spear than what he's using. And that would have been good times. But that's why I didn't want to give him one of those elemental swords, because he gets more damage off that jump with a spear. But it looks like the chainsaw is still better for the time being. But we're going to stick to the drill for when we get to the boss fight. Alright, use the area attacks, please. And if that doesn't kill them all, Locks can need some healing in a second. That killed them all. It's actually possible to go through this scene and not actually encounter both types of mag rotors. And if you don't, you can never find them again, so you, you miss out on a rage. Part of getting the full hundo, if you really want to get that full rage list on Gao, uh, you have to make sure you encounter every possible enemy. Okay, you're going to cure first this time. Because if you don't, they'll never show up on the Velt, and you just have an imperfect save file for all the rest of time. I didn't look up if these, this next boss if can steal anything from him, and I should have put his brigand's glove back on. Alright, so Loke now has Biz Blizzara, which is what we wanted. That's what we need. So he's got both Thundara and Blizzara. He's a pretty good mage at the moment. And here we go, number 128. Let's just go ahead and start punking him with Blizzara. We don't want to target his arms, we only want to target his body. So you still have... you've got Madwin. Yes, yes. So I guess we're gonna blitz with Fire Dance. Or Rising Phoenix, or whatever it's called. Hope for the best. We don't want to kill his arms, because then the thing will counterattack us. Oh, we killed his arms. Let's, uh... Get a Cure Spell going here. The problem is I don't have a way to make sure that Aura Cannon hits the middle part that we want to hit. And Luck is stopped. That's the stop effect. He doesn't get to do anything until all that pinkiness wears off. So now he's going to haste himself and let's Aura Cannon him. I don't think we need to pop a tent when we get out of here, but there is one more boss fight after this. So Lock got some more of Shiva's stuff. I think he's done with Shiva, actually. I think that's it. Boom! <laughs> he just murdered that poor man. There's a save point here. Uh, yeah, we don't need to actually heal. We just or use a tent. We're not that low on nips. We just need to 
pop a quick save. Give you your brigand's glove back. Uh, actually, first of all, let's make sure you've got the two right weapons. We want you to have two ice brands, because the next boss... You know what? Actually, that's what I want. That's exactly what we want right there. Two ice brands, Genji Glove, Hermes Sandals. You'll be fine. Look who was worried about us. Oh, never mind. We gotta go through this fight first. Hold on. It's... As soon as we... Oh, I just messed up my Blitz. I just messed up my Blitz. Something fierce. <laughs> it's funny that I know that the Blitz got messed up before it actually is messed up. The muscle memory is just... It just knows, man. It just knows. <laughs> so... Look who was worried about us. Oh my goodness, game. Alright, get rid of this chaser. Or a cannon. Him. Get, it, get the chainsaw out. I remember these spells procking a lot more off these swords that I'm actually seeing here. I think the proc should just it should be like 80 or 90%, if not just 100%. Just give me a free cast of fire. Fire is already kind of obsolete at this point in the game, you heard? So it's not like Locke is going to be severely overpowered with a Genji Glove casting two fire spells. Is that Imp? No. Looks like he's got Reflect on him now. Blue is Reflect, right? Brickard asked his audience in the future. Uh, let's make sure that we have... Are you done with Shiva? You are done with Shiva. So I want you to have... I don't even know. Kira. That'll be good for him. Kira will definitely be good for Locke going forward. Look who was worried about us. Good old Setzer. Unfortunately, we don't have the ability to equip Setzer before we have to fight with him. Which is too bad. Oh, I meant to give Edgar some earrings. Oh, I forgot to switch relics around. Oh well, that's fine. It'll be it'll be fine. It'll be just fine. Sabin gets to cast a spell, though, which is interesting. So from the top of Vector here, we have this incredible machine that they specifically built to grab airships, as far as I can tell. Even though there's only like one airship in the world, and doesn't look like they have much range, so. I don't know what other possible use these cranes have. This is our last bit of excitement for a minute, guys, so... <laughs> Sad to say. Good old cranes! Okay, so we need Sabin to act first. Which he will. Nope, Locke is acting first. Let's go ahead and get Float on everybody. I want you to... I guess it doesn't matter what he does, really. Uh, just cast Blizzara, I suppose. See what kind of slots we can get. And you, my friend, cast Bismarck on these guys. And that should do a pretty decent amount of damage. We'll see how well it actually goes. But you want to stick with Blizzard because one of them absorbs fire, one of them absorbs, one of them absorbs thunder, and I can never remember which is which anyway. I hope this airship bomb attack doesn't count as fire, otherwise things are going to get pretty weird. Yeah, that's why he's casting fire on the dude over there. If we hit him with three fire spells... Is it three or four? It might be four. But if we hit him with too many fire spells, he'll retaliate with a really powerful fire attack. And they also have an earthquake spell. They can shake the deck of the airship, which is why I wanted everybody floating. So, we got a bunch of Magicite in Vector. 
We learned all about what the Empire is up to, and now, unfortunately, we have to buckle in for a very long cutscene. But Sensor did us a solid. Like, he came in, rescued us, got us away on the airship. He's one of us now. So we're going to trust him with the whole story. If the cutscenes are not to your liking, if you prefer to watch the gameplay, the dungeon delving, the treasure collecting, the esper acquiring, the magic learning, now is an excellent time. You are dismissed. You don't have to watch the rest of the video. Thank you for watching. I've been Brick Road. For the rest of you, though, let's buckle in for a pretty long cutscene. Next video is going to be all interesting gameplay stuff, though, so we got that going for us. <laughs> and I'm going to take the opportunity to set my controller on the table and have a drink of iced tea. Delicious. <laughs> so now we're playing some nondescript Esper. Who knows what's going on? He knows what's going on. Someone's trying to come through the gate. So at some point in the Esper world, Espers don't like humans because why would they? Everybody's racist. Uh, but a human girl found their, her way into the Esper world. And the Esper Madwin brings her into rest. I mean, you can read the dialogue on screen to see what happens. So her name is Madeline in this version. In Woolsey's translation, it was Madonna. But, spoiler alert, Madwin and Madeline are Tara's parents. Tara is half human half Esper, and now Terra's father is dead. And he exists only as a piece of stone that is currently equipped to Cyan's... Not Cyan, to Sabin's... Uh, belly button? I guess? That's how you use Magisite? You plug it into your belly button? That's my guess? I, I don't know. But after she's well, Madeline decides to go back to her world. And Madwin's like, you don't have to go back to your world. You can stay here and live with the magic people for all the rest of time. And then they have the sex. Bow chicka bow bow. This is what sex looked like on all of the 16-bit consoles. Although graphical depictions of sex were very, very rare. I think, really, it's just this game and Shaq Fu for Sega Genesis. I'm pretty sure that's what was happening on screen in that game. I might be mistaken about that. Two years passed, and Terra is somehow still an infant, rather than being a toddler. And the Imperials sack the world of magic. So this would have been 16 years ago before the start of the game. And this is another little plot point that Final Fantasy VI never goes into is Terra doesn't have memories of this world. Even before they wiped her memory and put an amnesia crown on her and whatever. She was two when this happened. She doesn't have any recollection of what's going on here. She mu which means, and her, both of her parents die in this scene. Spoiler alert again. Which means Terra must have been raised in the Empire. She must have grown up as an orphan in the Gestalian Empire, having these magic powers that, to everyone else in the Empire, look like Magitek powers. The Empire takes, drains espers of their power and infuses them, infuses their soldiers with Magitek energy. That's where Celeste and Kefka both get their magic powers from. So to anybody in the Empire, Terra, that must look like the source of Terra's power, which means, logically, she was raised as like a good Imperial citizen. Like, it doesn't make sense otherwise, right? That does, that's the only thing 
that actually makes sense. Is But in the beginning of the game, we see Kefka needing to wipe Terra's memory in order to make use of her power. So they never explain how Terra makes that transition from Imperial citizen, uh, a soldier like Celeste, essentially, to someone who needed to be controlled with a magical relic. They never explain. There's lots of possible ways it could have happened. Like, Modwin was alive in the tube. The, uh... Until we just killed him, basically. He was alive in that tube, being sucked dry for 16 years. Until we showed up and threw the switch. And then all the espers in the Magitech factory, one of which was Modwin, decided to revert themselves to Magisite and give us their power. So Modwin's been alive this whole time. So why Terra needed to be controlled rather than just brought up in the Empire and trained as an Imperial soldier kind of left as a... Oh, in this scene it's okay to hit a woman, but not Celeste, apparently. Uh kind of left up to the viewer's imagination. Most viewers, I'm sure, won't think twice about it. Most players will just blow past the scenes and whatever, just take it at face value. But, Terra, I mean, Guest Hall just kills Madeline there, takes her daughter back to the Empire. She's raised there as a Magitek Knight. But, at the beginning of the game, she apparently needs to be controlled to use those powers. She does, which means she doesn't want to use them. So it kind of feels to me like there's a piece of backstory missing in the game. Like, something that was cut from the game explaining why Terra and maybe even Celis, maybe it was the same inciting incident. Tricky to know. So now we have Terra back. He's going to teach us how to fly the airship. I already know how to fly, so it's, it's fine. Yes, we got it. We're good to go. Nope. First thing we're going to do is go down and grab some refreshment. Actually, no. First thing we're going to do is unequip all party members. Handy dandy little... I think that will work on Celeste, who's left the party for story reasons. But it won't work on Shadow. If you hire Shadow in Kalinjin and take him to Zozo, if he leaves the party on by either abandoning you on the overworld, or if once you complete Zozo, he leaves no matter what you do. If you give him an Esper in that short period of time, literally one room... Uh, oh, I should build a party, I guess. I'm not going to take this party into the next scene. We'll do that at the end of this video here. Uh... If you give Shadow an Esper in that one room before the game takes over and, you, and you're whisked away, he leaves with that Esper and you don't see it again. Alright, come on, Gal. And Terra. And Setzer. And that's my party for now. That's who we're taking with us for the next scene. We let Gao drive the airship because we are responsible adults. And we'll get them equipped at the beginning of next video and do all kinds of fun stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Shoutouts to Paul Polomsky for sponsoring this video, and to everybody who helps make my channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.